Good evening, everyone. I know it's been a long time since you've heard from me. After giving up the game not longer than a year into its inception, I haven't had much to uh, talk about. Today, however, there was a uh, rather large announcement that Fantasy Flight Games is ending the Legend of the Five Rings, the card game. Uh, it was tweeted on both Facebook, or it was posted on Facebook, and then um, also posted on Twitter. Tweeted, I should say. Um, and, you know, he, here's Tyler's long post about the LCG and the things that, some of the things that he had planned. And then, There's this note that says the vibrant and immersive world of Legend of the Five Rings will continue to be explored with other exciting games currently in development. So, to me, what this means is, is Fantasy Flight Games is done trying to make a competitive LCG. They don't feel like they can they don't feel like they can do it and can do it for an extended period of time um, while I am personally fine with that what worries me is what are they producing are they going to try to do a miniatures game which obviously won't be under Fantasy Flight Games it'll be under one of the subsidiaries um, are they going to do a cooperative LCG? You know, that doesn't have much, much interest. Um, the RPG line's already with another sub company. Um, so, while this is a pretty big announcement, particularly for the groups that continue to play the LCG, To me, it's it's also more disappointment. It's obvious that Steve Horvath loves the game. He loves the story. He loves what L5R used to be. And he had a vision to bring it to Fantasy Flight Games and make it something spectacular. And unfortunately, that vision failed. I have contacted Fantasy Flight Games multiple times about purchasing the intellectual property. Uh, I have heard nothing from them, so they are not even willing to discuss it. However, There was some discussion today on Facebook See if I can find the So this post 
happen and for many of us in the L5R community it sparked interest. Uh, many of you know that David Lapp who was a former L5R CCG player uh, but also a large Doomtown fan uh, created Pinebox Entertainment to continue the Doomtown Reloaded game and has done so apparently fairly successfully for the last several years and now his company is working on a seventh seed uh, game uh, with Chaosum I, I forget the exact uh, company title but uh, they're working with the um, with John Wick on uh, on that. So when this post came up, we're thinking if anybody can sit down with Fantasy Flight Games and come up with a plan and show that they have been successful in executing those plans previously with other people's licenses it would be David and his team at Pine Box Entertainment um, You can see there's a lot of folks uh, very interested. I mean, a lot of uh, folks that previously played the game. Yeah, this one right here. Info obtained and working on initial email pitch. Feeling the love and support will let everyone know how it goes. So David is all in on trying this. I have already offered both of my comma to David. And when you have, of course, the Kims have played both games. Shea Ramsey's played both games. This is the one. Probably the greatest L5R player of all time. CCG of all time. When you got Case Kiyonaga very interested. Um... Brian Fox, I mean, Chris Martin. I mean, I can't name all the people that I've seen flock to this post. Um, Chuckles, Daniel Jacobson, Schwartz's. Uh, Chris Fossum, everyone knows Chuckles, um, Benjamin Higgins, he's like, just let it die, you know, I understand, uh, D-Bat, as many people know him,
Yeah, and there's my crazy line. Uh, but this one sort of sums it up. John Ling, I mean, I, th you know, Charles Urbach, Fred Wan. There's so many people in this list. It's it's um, it's not funny. Um, so my theory here is that Fantasy Flight Games is being gutted by Esmati. They've been, it's like, we're going to move this project to this company that's under you. This We're going to move this project to this company. Um, we knew Esmati was going to do this, right? They were going to take over Fantasy Flight Games. They were going to gut them, merge them into their major corp. And then they were going to use all of the smaller companies that had already been purchased by Fantasy Flight Games. Um, you know, Red Hat, or, um, yeah, Red Hat Games, I think it was, um, uh, and some of the other uh, um, companies to deal with each of the individual properties. One company work on miniatures, one company work on RPGs, etc. I think the licensing idea has merit, even if Asmati does not want to get rid of the IP at this time. Uh, they believe in milking a product till death. Um, and even, even though they own the IP now, they believe there's still money in it. The problem is they have to appease the correct group. They had several mistakes. They didn't do enough to keep enough of the original player base around, which was mistake one. And they didn't do enough to innovate the game um, maybe I shouldn't say innovate uh, to simplify the game where you could add a bunch of new players basically replace all the old players with the new players um, because they didn't do that they lost most of the old players and couldn't sustain any of the new players for long periods of time I actually think and I've been on record saying this multiple times that they made the game more complicated than the old game, and that was a real task. Um, the other thing, and I just no fault to either Tyler or Katrina, uh, but the individual people, um, Brad, that was on the original three man team. They could only do so much. What I mean by that is, after the original set and the original first year layout was done, um, they do what they always do in fantasy flight games. They they move that the lead designer and one other person off that team, make, changing a three man team to a one man team, and the those two people start working on the next big LCG, the next big game. And that's not a model for success, particularly long term. That's a model for short term cash grab. And it's even worse than what Magic has been doing for the last uh, two plus years. And that's saying something. Uh, as a small game store owner, you know, I've seen magic communities starting to wither because every card, you know, they, they put out so many broken cards in these new sets trying to sell them and then have to ban them within a few weeks to a year later. 
and they have to do it in multiple formats, they're not getting any traction. And so we've got people quitting in droves, you know, COVID notwithstanding. Uh, and of course that's hurt my bottom line. Um, so basically I've said all that to say this. Steve Horvath and the rest of Fantasy Flight Games and his Mahdi, you would do well to listen very carefully to the pitch of David's lap, Pine Box Entertainment. He has successfully continued the Doomtown relaunch that AEG started um, for several years. And he's now finishing the polishing the new product for uh, 7C um, card game. He has connections to the old players and he has a deep knowledge and understanding of the old game. Even if he has to make changes to the old game, um, to get it to work, it'll be much closer and much more profitable to listen to the players who played the game the longest. We're very good at pointing out problems. We're n we may not be a hundred percent on how to solve them, but I promise you we know how to to point out a problem. You know, you're welcome to do a miniatures game and put it with your subsidiary company. You're, re you're welcome to continue the RPG uh, if that's the model that you wish to continue it. But the card game should be squarely put in the hands of those who would give it the most nurturing, the most love, and make it the best it can be. And David and his team can certainly do that. Thank you for watching. There is no escape from the tiger.